Hello my dear students, in today's lesson we're gonna learn a little bit about fundamentals of marketing management. So if you're ready, let's do it. In today's agenda, we're gonna learn all the fundamentals related to marketing management. After we are gonna move uh, deeper into Dolan uh, Bar Fowler model studying a little bit about the five C's, the STP and the four P's of marketing. Uh, the fifth topic is going to be related to digital marketing where I'm going to uh, teach you a couple of vocabulary related to this topic. And in the end I'm going to summarize everything giving you a guidance to a marketing plan. This is going to be our first module marketing management fundamentals. According to Philip Kotler, one of the marketing gurus around the world, marketing is not the art of finding clever ways to dispose of what you make. It is the art of creating genuine customer value. According to Philip Kotler, marketing management is how you deliver value to your customer to uh, succeed and to uh, go uh, more According to Philip Kotler, marketing management is the process of planning, executing the conception, pricing, promoting and distribution of goods, services and ideas to create exchanges with target groups that are satisfied customer and organizational objectives. We have a couple of objectives here that I have to mention to you. The first one is creating new customers. The next one is satisfying the needs of these customers. The third one, enhancing the profitability of business. The next one, raising the standards of living people. And the last one, determining the marketing mix composed by product place, price, and promotion. This is the scope of marketing divided into some topics. They are product research, consumer research, packaging research, pricing research, advertising research, sales research, distribution research, Police research, police research, I'm sorry, international marketing research, motivation research, marketing research, and media research. All of these are the scope of marketing research. Here we have the key business plan and marketing plan elements. So we have this uh, plan divided into business plan and a strategic marketing plan. Inside the strategic marketing plan, we have the market research and the tactical marketing. All the topics here that are really important are business vision and mission, marketing segmentation and targeting, competitive environment, definition of offering, market positioning and strategy, marketing and selling model, product launch, operation and organization, and finally, financial analysis. All these topics need to be monitored and evaluated and also revised according to each period we are. This is the most important slide that we are going to discuss during this presentation, during this lesson. This is the Dolan Born Fowler model. Uh, here you can see all the five C's, the STP, the four P's, and the acquisition and retention of customers, where we can find, we can uh, identify, we can have as a result the profits of this process. We are going to study each one of them, starting with the five C's.
customers, company competitors, context, and collaborators. Here we go. This is going to be our second module, the Dolan model, the five C's of marketing. The five C's of marketing, as I have mentioned before, are compo is composed by company, customer, context, collaborators, and competitors. They are the five most important areas of marketing. So, please remember these words. They are truly important for your knowledge related to marketing management. The first C that we are going to look at is customer. Customer, we can summarize uh, this concept in, in three different concepts. They are needs, wants, and demands. Every single human being have needs. Needs are related to the basic uh, stuff that we need to have in order to continue living. Wants are desires for specific needs. So we have the need, we have, uh, for example, needs of food. But we can choose what we want to eat according to our wants. And when we are, uh, when the, the person, when we as, as people, as consumers, are able to pay for our needs and wants, then we are going to create our demand. Yes, this is the same demand as we study uh, in economic uh, management. So let's take a look at each one of them. This is the first concept related to needs, the Maslow pyramid. This is what we call this pyramid here, where we have divided all the five steps of needs every single human being uh, has. The first one, the basic part, is related to uh, physiological needs. Uh, they are air, water, food, shelter, uh, sleep, clothing, reproduction. All these things are basic. So every single human being, according to Maslow, needs to achieve these things before we move to the second step. The second step is safety needs. Personal security, employment, resources, health and property are safety needs we have. After we move on to the next one, we move up to the next one, love and belonging. We have the sense of, belong, uh, of belonging to a group of people just like friends, family, uh, connection between groups. For example, I study at Unifei. So this is your sense of connection. Moving on now, we have this team part where we, fa uh, we need to have respect from the others, status, recognition, freedom. And in the end of the pyramid, in the top of the pyramid, we have the self-actualization, which is related to uh, the desire to become the most that one can be, or the most that we can be as a human being. This is the Maslow Pyramid. The next C we have is company. Company is about the mission, the vision, the product line, culture, goals, and image in the market, everything related to the company. The tool that we use to analyze the company is called SWOT analysis. This is the SWOT analysis, one tool that we do in order to discover how our company is in the market, in the vision of the market. So the first one is strengths. So, all the positive uh, issues related to our company. Weaknesses, all the points of improvement that we need to focus on. Opportunities, 
This is an external issue related to a couple of opportunities we have in the market. And threats, they are all the, uh, all the issues coming from the, the external market that can affect uh, our company. The next one is competitors. Just like a company, we need to evaluate our competitors in order to see, to check if we can compete with them or not. If not, we need to have our own strategy to be in the market. This is the ADL matrix, another tool that we can use to evaluate our own company or our competitors. Uh, we also have the SWOT, ana SWOT analysis, but we can use these two together with that one or as a, a, an option. Okay, so here you have the maturity in the X uh, part, just like uh, uh, growing, mature, aging, and we have the competitive position from our competitors. So if it is they are weak, they are favorable, they are dominant in the market, and then we can have a good analysis in which competitor we need to care more about. Okay, and finally we have the next C, which is collaborators. And collaborators is not only a matter of employees, but also uh, related to suppliers and distributors. Okay, so this is not only related to uh, uh, our company itself, but also uh, all the companies that composed our supply chain. This is the tool we can use in order to analyze our collaborators. This is what we call the stakeholder analysis matrix. This comes from project management, project management, and uh, it is where we list all our, uh, all our collaborators in order to know if they are going to, uh, to have a high influence, medium influence, or low influence into our business, the impact, the level of impact they have, and many other types of information. The last C is the context. It is totally related to the macro environmental uh, factors or external factors that may uh, affect our company. In order to analyze this factor and uh, be aware about uh, what we need to do, which uh, strategy we need to take in order to better position our company in the market, into the market, we use this strategy here, this tool which we called PASTIL-D analysis. PASTIL is an acronym related to these issues. Political, economic, social, cultural, technological, environmental, legal, and demographic. All of them are issues, are external issues that we need to analyze. This is the PASTIL-D analysis. This is just a short example to show you how it looks like. So, for example, in political, the government type and stability, economic, stage of a business cycle, uh, social, we have cultural aspects, health, conscious, consciousness, uh, the technology, maturity of technology, competing technological developments, research foundings, etc. In the legal one, we have, for example, European international or international legislation that could affect our uh, legal issue. The next one is ecological, such as environmental issues, environmental regulations, and we don't have here the demographic because some, uh, some analysis does, uh, don't include this uh, this D demographic, okay? But I consider this one as a really important issue. And in demographic, we can have population, gender, 
uh, aging and many different types of groups that we can divide it uh, we can divide our context in the next topic the next module we are going to analyze the stp segmentation targeting and positioning as a part of the, the dolan bar fowler model Segmentation is the first uh, concept we are going to learn now. Segmentation is uh, a matter of prioritization. We need to prioritize uh, our investments in order to uh, well invest our money. Okay, so this is a matter of how effective we manage our funds in order to achieve a better result developing uh, the correct marketing mix for our uh, target group. This is the whole strategy, starting from marketing segmentation. The first topic we need to do is identify basis for, mar for segmenting the market. After, we develop profiles of resulting segments. Next one, we move to the market targeting which is the one we are going to study next. Uh, developing selection criteria, and after we select the target segments, after we move, on, we move to market positioning. So the, the first thing we need to do in this topic is develop positioning for each target segment. And in the end, we develop marketing mix for each target segment. I'm going to explain this to you as a pizza. So, first of all, we have a pizza, we need to divide this pizza into eight slices, okay? This is the first thing we do. After, according to our criteria, we are going to choose the first slice of pizza. For example, if you have ordered um, four cheese pizza together with, uh, I don't know, uh, traditional pizza of uh, bacon i don't know so uh, if you want to start with four cheese then we are going to have a criteria to decide it this is the criteria we are going to decide in order to target to target our uh, market so i'm going to target the slice of pizza the, the biggest slice of pizza uh, made of four cheese okay after we need to position our uh, our products to this uh, to this uh, group of people that we have chosen to target. Okay, so this is how we conduct our segmentation and targeting, and the positioning is it is how we are going to offer our product to the market. There are a lot of different types of segmentation or tools to segment that we can use. Uh, the most common ways to do it is using the demographics, psychographics, lifestyle, belief and values, the life stages, geography, uh, geography I'm sorry, behavior and benefits. These are the most common ways that we can segment our market. After you divide your customers uh, into different segment, segments, you have to target them. You have to decide which you want, you want to, uh, to uh, attack. So, uh, in order to do this, we have a couple of criteria. The first one to decide is related obviously to profitability so how profitable the segment is for your company after we can analyze the potential growth of this segment how uh, this segment is going to increase increase during the the years through the years and the last criteria you can use is how well you can serve this market if you cannot serve it this is not important for you. This segment is not good for you. Okay. So um, this is something that we need to evaluate. These are some other criteria that we need to evaluate when we deal 
on uh, our strategy of targeting. So the first one is the criteria size. The next one is difference, money, accessibility. And the last one is focus on different benefits that you must need uh, for this type of segment. OK? After we segment our customers and uh, when we uh, target the segment we want to achieve, we need to create our value proposition. So to do this, we use the positioning strategy. OK, so the positioning strategy is uh, related to how we are going to create our marketing mix in order to, live, to, to develop value to our group of customers, to our target group of customers. OK, and to do this, we need, first of all, uh, we need to know why customers should purchase our products or services. This is the first thing, the reason why they are going to choose us in, uh, in spite of the others. Next, we are going to treat, to treat uh, the wants and needs of our customers. We need to understand it in order to, to better uh, create our strategy of positioning. Okay? And finally, we need to create our value proposition which is the perception from the customers about our company, about our products, about our image. This is an example on how we position our products uh, in the market. You have here the luxury, sporty, economy and family issues related to cars. Okay, And here you have a couple of examples of cars uh, divided into these squares. So in the first square, sporty and luxury, we have Porsche uh, 911 and Audi A4. And we have in the second uh, square other, th other cars, just like the Ronda Civic, in the third one, Lexus IS. And in the last one, we have Toyota uh, AG, uh, Ego. OK, and here, when we compare this, uh, these issues, these criteria, we have uh, a gap in the market, maybe, which is uh, a car compo uh, with this uh, criteria economic and also uh, focused in uh, family use. OK, so if we have this gap, maybe we could create our marketing mix for this uh, positioning. To sum up the STP, segmentation, targeting and positioning, we have here one complete analysis that we need to do in order to create our strategy, our marketing strategy. So first of all, we need to decide which customer or what customers we want to achieve. For this, we use the needs and wants analysis. Uh, needs, remember, is related to Maslow Pyramid and wants is related uh, to how we are going to, uh, to fill these blanks of needs. Okay. After we decide this, we need to segment our market. So we are going to divide our market uh, into slices or pieces according to uh, our criteria. For example, demographic criteria, uh, I don't know, geographic and many others. After we segment our market, we are going to target it. So we need to choose the segment we want to attack. We can, uh, we can use different criteria to do this, such as profitability, how well we, have, we can serve this market, and other types of criteria. And after, we are going to position our company, our product, uh, not product, but our value uh, propose, 
in order to achieve this market. We can use uh, the SWOT analysis here also, but we need to pay attention at the marketing mix that we are going to deliver to the market. Product, price, place and promotion, which are the ones that we are going to study right now. For the module number four, we are going to discuss the four P's or marketing mix composed by products, place, price and promotion. The marketing mix as I have said before, is composed uh, by product, price, placement and promotion according to Jeremy McCarty. These are the concepts that I want you to put into your veins, in your blood. You need to find these concepts in your blood, okay? We also could have three more concepts here that we are not going to study in this section, in this presentation, but they are uh, people, process, and uh, physical uh, evidence, okay? As I have said, we are not going to discuss them in this uh, lesson, but you can go uh, and study a little bit more about it if you want, okay? To sum up this part, we have some criteria for each of the four P's, in this case, the seven P's. A product is composed by the quality of the product, the branding, uh, the customer service, warranties, availability, and many other things, uh, and not just the product itself, okay? Promotion. Promotion is much more than what we you might think about it. It is related to public relations, to branding, to sales promotion, to personal promotion, to marketing communications we are going to use, and other topics here that are inside of promotion. When we move to price, it's not the price itself, but the price list, the discounts, the credit, the payment methods, uh, I don't know, the positioning, and things like this. Okay, so price is much more than the price itself. And the place is related to the trade channels, the channel number, the segmented channels, the sales support, the distributor channels, and other things like this. Okay, so uh, it's much more than the place itself. It's more, uh, it's related to the supply chain of it and other topics, okay? And people process and physical evidence that we are not going to, to study here, but you have the criteria for this. What product is about? Product uh, represents an item of service designed to satisfy customer, uh, customer needs and wants. So a product is nothing more than the perceived and material uh, issue that you are going to deliver to a customer, okay? Obviously, a product has a, a, a life cycle that includes the growth phase, the maturity phase, and the sales decline phase, okay? So, let's move on. Place. The place is, uh, is the type of product sold that is important to consider when determining areas of distribution. So, it's not a matter of only areas to distribute it, but places to store it, uh, the warehouse, the stores that you're gonna uh, put your product to be sold, uh, if it is online, if it is a physical store or both, uh, the distribute, uh, distribution channels that you're gonna use, all these things are related to place. The next one is related to the value uh, that you're going to deliver to the customer that they need to pay for it. So it's much more than the price itself, but it's related to the conditions of payments that you're going to give to your uh, audience, to your clients, the pricing list, uh, discounts that you may offer to your uh, audience, okay? Many different types of things. 
value-based pricing uh, plays a key role in products that are considered to be status symbols. So sometimes you're going to buy something just because of the price and not because of the product itself. Moving on to promotion. What is promotion about? Promotion is uh, advertising typically covers communication methods that are paid for like television advertisements, radio, print media, internet advertisements, and many different types of things, okay? This is how you are going to, uh, I don't know, you are going to consider uh, to communicate your brand to the audience. Obviously, you have a budget, a budget assigned to this marketing mix, and that's why it is limited. So you cannot use all the types of promotion tools that you have in the market because your budget is limited, unfortunately. <laughs> to sum up, we have here the product, price, place, and promotion cycle. As I have said to you, just remember to, anal uh, to analyze all the issues, all the criteria that I have posted for you in a couple of slides uh, ago. Okay, you have all the issues that you need to consider when we talk about product, place, price, and promotion. In the next module, the module number five, we are going to discuss a couple of concepts uh, to apply marketing uh, management into digital marketing. Digital marketing is related to uh, all the strategies that we use online in order to uh, put our value available to our customers. We can use tools, uh, as you might know, websites, uh, videos, images, written contents, uh, online products or tools, and many different types of things. Everything that we use that is online, we can consider inside this digital marketing management. Okay. Uh, other types of uh, strategies that we can use, they are email marketing, pay-per-click advertising, social media marketing, blogging, and many different types of things that we can use in order to communicate our value to our customers. Here you have a couple of concepts that summarize our digital marketing uh, strategy. So websites, www, uh, the viral marketing where you post videos or images that uh, that become uh, viral in, in the web. Electronic devices such as tablets and mobiles. Analysis, so we have a lot of data available inside marketing, uh, digital marketing, and we need to analyze all of them in order to find or to identify trends uh, and uh, a couple of information that are useful for our strategy. The SEO, so when you go to search something, uh, you can use these words in order to put your brand uh, more available for your audience. The search thing, the creation of co uh, contents for the market, such as free ebooks, and research itself that you can use different types of social media to do it. Moving on to the next one, the next concept is related to the affiliate marketing. It is kind of a, a sales representative that you may have in the market. So you're, this affiliate uh, marketing uh, works like this. So first of all, the affiliate puts your ad on their website or social media. The customer clicks and converts it into sales. After these conversions are tracked by a system or by a place, a website, and after the affiliate gets a commission and you get uh, a sale for it. Okay, it basically is a sales representative that works, uh, works for you. 
the influencer marketing is uh, related to a celebrity or a character, a story, a storytelling, or followers, or I don't know, professionals that are famous in different types of business, different type of uh, uh, of stuff such as music, uh, television, YouTubers that are really useful nowadays in order to convert uh, your promotion into sales. So you use the image of the influencers in order to convert uh, products into sales. The SEO uh, is the search engine optimization where you use uh, keywords in order to classify your uh, product better in the market, in the digital market, okay? Now we are going to discuss a little bit about our last module, which is the marketing plan. Okay, my dear students, so this is the end of our presentation. And to summarize our presentation, all the con concepts that we have studied uh, here, I'm going to explain to you the steps that you need to follow in order to create your marketing planning process. Okay? So, the step number one is the mission. You need to have a mission statement. You have to create the mission of your company. The vision of your company is always important. After you are going to target your corporate objectives or goals or uh, the strategy that you need to follow in order to achieve your goals, okay? Now we move to the, se the, to the step uh, number two, which is the situation analysis. We identify opportunities, we make the 5S analysis, company, customer, competitors, uh, collaborators, and, and uh, context. After we move to the SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And also we make the, inside the context analysis, we make the PAST or PST or PASTO or PASTO-D analysis, okay? If you will remember, the PASTO-D analysis is composed by political, economic, social, technological, environmental, legal, and demographic. Moving on, we have the step number three, which is the marketing strategy, where you define your tar target audience according to the demand you have, you set, set measurable goals, and also you develop your budget, the budget that you are going to use in order to achieve the results of your marketing planning process. The step number four is the marketing mix, where you're going to develop the product, the price, the promotion, and the place and distribution. Remember here we can have more three other P's that we are not going to study during this presentation. And finally, the last step is the implementation and control. You put plan into action, so you put this plan, all this plan here, you put into practice, you execute it, and after you measure and monitor your results, uh, in order to achieve the better results, okay, the best results. And to illustrate our presentation, now I'm going to share with you a marketing plan uh, by Disney, Disneyland. So enjoy this video, watch it, and uh, try to identify all the concepts that I have showed you, that I have t taught you during this presentation, during this lesson, okay? So, I say goodbye for now, enjoy this video, and if you have any question, just send me messages, send me WhatsApp, or post it on our groups, on, at SIGA, on SIGA, okay? So, see you guys uh, in the next video. Bye!